Hello everyone, Genesis Rider here with another Genesis Tips and Tricks video. Today I'll be showing you some SWAT gameplay on the map Abandoned, and probably trying to teach you how to play the map a little better. Now, off the spawn here, at the very beginning of the game right here, there are many ways to approach this. Um, one of my favorite things to do is just go through this tunnel and come up here, right here, and then look as, as they try to jump top middle and shoot them right here. Unfortunately, that doesn't end up happening during this video. But that's one of the ways from this spot you can charge to the enemy location. Another way, which I'll be mentioning, is to go up this left-hand ramp, go up here, jump on top of this box, and crouch jump up to the top here, and surprise them. They rarely see that coming. Unfortunately, while I do get a kill, an enemy player is backed up and ends up shooting me from the very back of their base. Probably a very smart maneuver. I haven't seen that angle used too much in matchmaking. Here I'm pushing through Purple Forest um, to the their top yellow, which is where my teammate just lifted up um, back there. Um, I'm pushing to Ring 2 right now, and I'm checking spawns, trying to make sure that they're not going to get surprised. I heard somebody lift up, and there he is. Checking for that other guy who I heard fire. I see a guy top mid and take him out for the double kill. Seeing a guy on the ramp to Ring 3, I kill him. Grab the overkill as I end up dying right as it shoots me. It is possible to trade like that in SWAT. It is even possible to trade like that in Sniper um, to both die. Um, in this game, my shot was really on point. I was just making a lot of good decisions in terms of getting good shots, just like right there. Now, I would like to pause here and mention what my strategy is for this game. A lot of people don't seem to understand how you play abandoned. One of the easiest ways to play abandoned, especially in terms of SWAT where people are dying and spawning constantly, is to simply hold one side of the map. As you can see, one of my teammates is over here on the back, sort of blocking the spawns. And what that means is he's rotating around during the back, making sure that people, enemy players don't spawn back here when they die, jump to top mid, and kill me. You need to have two or three good players up top mid, purple forest, or gray cave area. Uh, this tree is called Magic Tree because you have the lift that goes up it. Uh, but you want to have two or three good teammates holding this line right here. Uh, all the way here to here. You just want to have good teammates holding this area. The reason why, so the enemy players spawn over here and over here. Okay, That's where you want them to spawn is on this side of the map because you have the total advantage. You are on the high ground, and in SWAT, when you have the high ground, you can see people's heads easier. And that's what they're trying to do. As you can see, they're forced to charge up to us through this ramp. Now, you're not going to be able to hold this position the entire game, but this is one of the best examples in the game that I've seen of my own personal gameplay of doing this. Especially the clip you're about to see a lot. As you can see, the entire enemy team has spawned on the lower beach near the root. Um, it's a very big root that sticks out of the ground there. And I'm just picking them off as they um, are very predictably running the same path over and over again. Get an insane shot with the battle rifle there for the double kill. Pick up the triple long range. Long range for the overkill and the very unlikely kill tacular, which I managed to pull off. That's why I love the battle rifle, because you're able to pull off shots like that. Unfortunately, I did not check the ramp. Um, what I needed to do there, instead of um, shooting a guy right here and then dropping off, uh, that's very precarious. The reason why is because you don't know if people are over here. Before dropping off um, to any location, whether it's on the left or right of this top center area, you want to check this center ramp and check here and here, just to make sure people aren't charging you and coming up. Let your teammates worry about the area behind you. Shot on this guy charging ring three. Notice how I um, spot this spawning opponent there. That again, they do spawn over here. Rarely do you catch spawning people completely off guard, but this is one of those maps where it is way more possible to do so if you're holding the right positions on the map, as I've already shown you. Now, if you see there, the uh, enemy player catches me off guard by jumping in from the back of the map. What that means is that my teammates were not guarding that area, and as you can see on my HUD, only one of my teammates is in Purple Forest. My other two teammates are one over there, and the other one will be right here. And so we're not anywhere over on that back portion of the map, which means that they can now spawn there. So I have to take control of this game, and I'm going to try to be doing that. I end up 
picking a very, very, picking up a very nice triple. And as you can see, that third player, I'll just rewind real quick here. That third player wasn't there. He actually spawned on his teammates over there. Um, the third player sort of appears, right? You see, you see how he sort of appears here because he's spawning on his teammates. When you kill one or two people in one area, you can almost guarantee, especially if you get a double kill, that there's going to be a third person or even a fourth person hanging around. Especially in Halo 4, as you're able to spawn very, very quickly. The game tends to spawn you closer to your teammates. That's again why you want to hold one side of the map and keep them on the other side. Unfortunately, at chasing this guy ring 3, I end up being shot from beach. I'm going to try to take control of this back area. Um, choke a little bit. I was trying to make that jump, but that didn't work out. So I'm going to charge ring 3 here. I hear the lift as with my Asteroid 40s, and, um, and fortunately, I'm able to get a whip shot on that first guy. Getting a good shot on the second guy. Um, here is the one position. That's the one position where I die top middle, where you might be able to pull off using the DMR. Um, fortunately, as you're able to see in this gameplay, though, the battle rifle, as you should readily be able to tell by some of the insane shots I'm pulling off, the battle rifle is much better used on this map than the DMR, simply because the long-range combat doesn't appear as much on this map. Now, this is a really bad position to charge from, and the only reason why I charge up this uh, side ramp a second time, as you can tell, it's very easy to keep most of your body hidden and only peek out your head and pop them in the head, should I say. But the reason why I'm going to charge at this left-hand side again is simply because we're ahead so much in score. You can modify your play style to be a little bit more reckless on this map. Um, well, especially on this map, should I say, if you're winning by a huge amount. So there, I'm a little reckless. I'm charging, I'm sprinting, which means my weapon isn't up, and he gets the first shot on me and kills me, which is unfortunate. But um, thankfully here, I end up getting top middle, some top middle control. And there's five kills remaining in this game. Um, I would like to point out, just before this game this game ends, you can jump on top of this, but you can also jump from here onto any of these little railings, uh, the railings that are currently in the very center of your screen right now. You can jump there and sort of um, peek over. People really only expect you to be moving past this window that I'm in front of right now. So if you instead jump on top of here and then jump on top of here to check all around, that's really, really advantageous to you. And it can really help when moving around the map. Don't camp there because they'll immediately know where you are. But it's really helpful uh, to know that tip and just be, be aware like that. So coming to the end of this game, uh, thankfully melees do not affect their teammates. Otherwise, I might have killed him there. Uh, they don't uh, affect their teammates in SWAT. I'm really glad they turned that off. Uh, normally, as I said at the beginning of this uh, film, that uh, that charge maneuver that I made on the left there through Gay Gray Cave, and I was about to jump up on that box, normally that works, as you're about to see, or no, actually I'm going to get the last kill here, but normally that works, um, and you're able to uh, sort of jump um, up this box to top center. Um, another thing I'd like to point out, um, the reason why I'm shooting that body there, um, and it's something I'm going to point out, it's much better to shoot a body. Uh, than it is to teabag or melee it, simply because that's not a very sport. Un it's a very unsportsmanlike maneuver. Uh, getting tripped up over my words again to pull off something like that. So, um, shooting the body is much more appropriate if you feel like you dominate the enemy player in some way. But overall, um, much more appropriate than teabag. Anyway, guys, I hope this video was helpful to you, and hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I'll see you on my next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace, guys. <laughs>